Present. Councillor Judy Smith. Present. Councillor Bellamy. Present. Councillor Bishnow Singh. Present. Councillor Crawford. Present. Councillor Dilks. Present, Mum. Thank you. <laughs> Please make me laugh, Councillor Dilks. Councillor Exton. Present. Thank you. Councillor KB Brown. Councillor KB Brown. Come back to her. Councillor Milnes. Present. Thank you. Councillor Reed. Present. Councillor Selby. Yes, literally just finished my lunch. We're having to go. Present. Thank you. Councillor Jackie Smith. Present. Thank you. Um, Councillor KP Brown, are you there? I think we can move on, Anita. We're going to listen to um, uh, Phil Jordan come back with those conditions. What we need to do is make sure Rosemary's back when it comes to the vote. I don't think it's... Uh, a great problem if um, she's not able, able to join us before we go through these conditions. Right. Chairman, it's Martha. I would just, whilst I would just advise caution because obviously if members make comments on the conditions, etc., um, that is okay. part of the debate. So then she would miss that. Okay, okay, you're quite right. So can we try and make contact with Rosemary? Yes, certainly, Mr. Chairman. I would hope members would not feel necessary to have a debate on the conditions. Sorry, I'm here now. Oh, wonderful, Rosemary. Thank you. I was on mute. OK, Phil, Phil Jordan, are you back with us? I am. Thank you, Chairman. Thank I'm you, just Phil. Gonna, just going to share my screen again. Confirm, Mr. Chairman. Sorry to interrupt, but everybody is back that should be back for this particular item. Thank you, Chairman. I hope, hope everyone had a nice, nice lunch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was that a dig, Phil? <laughs> nice. No, Paul, not, not, to, not at all. I was just wish, wishing you all well. <laughs> yeah. well, well received then. <laughs> three um, three conditions. Um, first one is the construction management plan. Uh, so it's the the trigger point is no development in phase two shall commence until details of the construction management plan have been submitted to and approved um, by the local planning authority, and then that requires them to include uh, parking arrangements for the site operatives and visitors. Uh, loading and unloading arrangements for planter materials and um, storage of planter materials, wheel washing facilities, uh, routes of construction traffic. And then this last part is about um, how surface water would be managed through the construction period. Um, talking with the developer, it sounds like they would be using the permanent arrangements in any case, because um, that part of the infrastructure is already in place so th th this is pretty much the um the standard wording that we get from the uh, highway authority um or also the, the lead local flood authority so ho hopefully that um is satisfactory for that condition uh, the second condition was around materials so it, this one says notwithstanding the approved materials plan the external surfaces of the walls of plot 131 and 136 um, and then in addition to the three plots which were already um, shown to be stone shall be of a natural local limestone details of which shall be submitted to and approved in writing by the local planning authority um, so just to show you 131 is this plot here where my cursor is that that's going to be quite a prominent plot within the site um, it overlooks the, uh, the 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 play area and it's clearly visible from the three meter cycle way and then the second one 136 it's the same um, house type as this one which was already stone plot 42 and again it's pretty prominent within the development you've got the 
public right of way that connects Sorrel Close with the three metre cycleway at the top, and there's obviously a, a bit of a thoroughfare through for the for the play area. So hopefully these two plots are um, appropriate, and the the developer has confirmed they would be in agreement to having those two um, in stone as well. And then the last or the third condition that we discussed was um, street furniture. So notwithstanding the approved hard landscaping plan, details of the street furniture to be provided within phase two shall be submitted to and approved in writing by the local planning authority. And then, so that allows us to capture what that would be. From the discussion I got that it was predominantly this square and related to seating. So suggested trigger point is that um, any approved details would have to be implemented and installed before the occupation of plots 94 to 96 which is um, this little cluster here 101 and 102 which is these two and then 109 and 118 so effectively none of these um, properties could be occupied before the the hard landscaping and the street furniture was in place for that uh, that part of the site. So yeah, hopefully that's captured what was discussed. Um, but happy to sort of either answer a question on that or, or for members to confirm. Uh, uh, can you hear me, Phil? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think the only thing that is missed out of that was you you referred to consultation. Uh, Phil, uh, and who do we cons consult on this? Should that be put into the condition? No, I think um, you know we um, all of those details require um, approval in writing by the local planning authority. So, what the process is is the developer would have to submit details to us, and what we um, what I can add to the file is a is a note that requires consultation to include the parish council and the local ward members um which again hopefully picks up the um what 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 we agreed yeah Chairman, okay bob sorry jeff yeah, yeah. speaking yeah just very briefly um yes the that that's a fairly standard approach that is outlined the condition will outline um the local planning authority will reference the local planning authority and then the consultation is up to the local planning authority when they get those details so so the proposal that fills out line there is uh, is appropriate thank, thank you, you for that jeff uh, judy stevens are you still with us possibly not uh... no i am i am i am still here okay. um brilliant thank you very much i'm very pleased with that Super. obviously so thank, thank you. you thank you very much indeed and uh, uh, uh ashley virginia georgina kate um, Mr. Chairman, it, it's uh, Councillor Bills. Um, yep. um, Kate uh, from the Parish Council sends her apologies. She she'd um, said previously she'd got a one o'clock um, oh, meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and she, so, but she welcomes the Parish Council being involved in that consultation. So and, and thank you for it. Um, can I just add while I'm while, while I'm here uh, to say thank you very much to Phil Jordan and to Georgina for um, um, you know the cooperation on that and, and to all members of the planning committee and, and to colleagues um, Judy Stevens, uh, Virginia Moran and, and uh, Ashley Baxter who also spoke this morning and I think I think we've got you know this is a good outcome and, and this is really what planning committee should be all about and, and uh, I do welcome the progress um, you know we're, we're, we are we, where we are we, we haven't got tree lined avenues but we have made a little bit of progress and so I say thank you and I, I will as I said support it and I'm actually I'm, I'm now happy to um, you know propose it if, uh, if if that would be helpful chairman that would be very helpful Phil and can I say I echo your words of thanks to uh, Georgina and Phil for acting so so speedily and so uh, so promptly uh, very very helpful indeed so Phil has uh, proposed that. Uh, do I have a seconder from the members? Uh, yes, Chairman, I'll second that. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, can we now move to the vote, please, Anita? Yes, certainly, Mr Chairman. Um, Councillor David Bellamy. For. 
Councillor Hish how is sorry, Councillor Harris Bish now sing. Four. Councillor Crawford. Four. Councillor Dilks. Four. Councillor Exton. Four. Councillor Cabry Brown. Four. Councillor Milnes. Four. Councillor Reed. Four. Councillor Selby. I did actually put in the chat, Mr Chairman, that I wanted to speak, but I just wanted to add my thanks to Phil and to Georgina. Uh, Phil, thank you very much indeed. Your effort during the break was, was much appreciated. Voting for. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Jackie Smith. Councillor Jackie Smith. I've just muted you, Councillor Smith. Uh, are you able to respond? Is that better? Yep. Yes. Can hear you now, Jackie. So we're voting, Councillor Smith. Are you for, against, or abstaining, please? For. Thank you, Councillor Judy Smith. For. Councillor Adams. For. Thank you. That's twelve in favour, Mr. Chairman. So it's carried. Thank you, Anita. And again, with apologies to those uh, who are waiting to speak under item seven, which we're going to take before item six. Uh, and I think this is in the hands of Peter Lifford, please. Yes, thank you, thank you Chairman. Thank you, Peter. Just bear with me whilst I um, get the presentation up. Not yet, Peter. Yes, yeah, a bit, um, a bit slow. Apologies for this. It's still saying it's loading on my screen. It is, it is on mine as well. All oh, right. Okay. Peter. Okay. Ah. It's come up on mine. Right. I've got something. Okay. Super. Thanks, Peter. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, councillors. Um, so this is application S21851. It relates to 44 Chapel Street, Hackenby. And so I'm the presenting officer. My name is Peter Lifford. The application is for the change of use from a C3 dwelling house to a C2 care home use. So the key prints, the key issues in relation to the application is the, the principle of the use, impact on the use of the use on the character of the area, impact on neighbouring properties, highways, and then the key, any control and monitoring of that use. Just for a bit of uh, context as to where Hackenby is, so if you're on that um, Google Street image there, Hackenby is at the top of the screen, identified by the red arrow, and the edge of Bourne is the, as you can see, by the red arrow to towards the bottom of the screen. 
for where the site is in relation to Hackenby. Um, it's at the eastern end of the village and so it's outlined in that red um, square or red oblong as you can see on that slide there. So that's a, a larger view of the, the red line application site. As you can see, it's a detached property uh, in a row of uh, similar sized properties. And then I say there are further similar sized properties on the uh, north side of, of Chapel Street. So the proposal is to use it uh, for a uh, children's home for three children between the ages of 11 to 18. That's a detached four bedroom property. So that is the existing floor plans. Um, they, so you've got the detached, detached property with a detached garage located to the rear of the property. And so the as part, part of the uh, uh, conversion or the, the change of use, there are various internal works proposed to the to the property to create uh, bedrooms for the children. children. And, and, have you got guns and <laughs> and um, the such uh, so great bedrooms for the children and then accommodation for the, uh, the, the members of staff there's some uh, elevational views uh, photographs of the site so that's the sites looking from the opposite side of Chapel Street so that's the uh, property to the left-hand side. So you see the existing access there, providing into the site. And that's the site again, showing a relationship to the property to the to the right. So these views up and down um, the Chapel Street. That's looking towards the village centre, and then that's um, property opposite you the. Get the some more salt, I think, for you to put. And that's the property uh, opposite the application site. So as the for, for just for clarification purposes, um, on the committee report, um, the officer's um, assessment of the report actually starts at point six point two on the agenda. Um, so within the agenda, it sets out the um, vehicle, the number of staff employed, and the, the movements to and from the site. As members will see, the application is up for, uh, it's actually being recommended for refusal. Um, it's been refused on, recommended for refusal on the grounds of, of noise and disturbance from the vehicular movements to and from the site. Now, if you look at this uh, slide here, it shows the existing layout of the front garden and the proposed. So the existing layout, um, so it's got the uh, offer, the, Access off the road, showing to the parking. Um, general, I mean, at the moment they've used the, the garage at the rear. As part of the proposal, they're in, in proposing to enlarge the parking area to the front and showing the say five off-road car parking spaces. So, as I say, the application is one for recommendation of refusal, as set out on the agenda at, um, at point or no, section ten on the agenda. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Peter. We have uh, one, two, three, four speakers on this. Um, just to remind them, three minutes, and Shelley will indicate when the 30 seconds is remaining. So first speaker is uh, uh, Councillor Richard Dixon-Warren, please, Chairman of Hackenby and Stan Stainfield Parish Council. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Hackenby and Stainfield Parish Council is grateful for the opportunity to speak at this planning committee. The Council has submitted two representations in response to planning application S20-1851. It notes and supports the brief of, to the Planning Committee dated the 12th of February. It remains unanimous in its compassion for young people who have to be put into care, and this compassion underpins its concern about the selection of a small, isolated, rural village with minimal social, recreational, cultural facilities, amenities and services for young people for a change of use to what is expected to be a complex needs home. The Council agrees with the assessment of a detrimental effect upon the character of the area and the residential amenities of adjacent properties due to the level of vehicular activity associated with the proposed use and the close proximity of neighbouring dwellings causing noise and disturbance contrary to policy DE1 of the local plan. The Council reiterates that it has seen no persuasive evidence 
that the proposed change of use would facilitate growth in the local economy or support local residents, that the proposed C2 home would help to create a sustainable, inclusive and mixed community, that it would make a valuable contribution to the community in a location close to local amenities, of which there are none, or that there would be no adverse impact on the amenity of neighbouring users, or that there is regard to features that minimise crime and the fear of crime. The Council agrees that the fear of crime is a material consideration. It highlights the statement on Cabian Group's website that many of the young people in our complex needs homes present with anger management issues, absconding and criminal behaviours. This statement has given rise to an anticipated fear of crime. The Council has seen no statement of support for the proposed home and is not confident that the supervision arrangements that would be in place for this facility would necessarily reduce the fear of crime. Hackenby is isolated and some distance from police stations in Grantham and Stamford. Neighbourhood policing is minimal and Lincolnshire police resource limitations are well known. An adverse effect on neighbours amenity and consequent difficulty for assimilation of the care home in the community could be expected. The Parish Council requests that these points be taken into account in the Planning Committee's consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dixon Warren. Could I move to uh, Michael Speakman, please, who wishes to speak against? Mr. Speakman. And Speakman, I'm Michael's wife. I'm going to be reading out our objection. Um, Thank you. We feel that this planning application has not been made in the best interests of the service user, the vulnerable young adults in Cambion's care, their needs and their safety. The proposed planning application is a commercial business operating from number 44 Chapel Street, which is currently a quiet rural residential area. This is not a normal family setup. This is a commercial high profit placement for young adults with complex care needs. With this in mind, we feel the planners have a responsibility to ensure these vulnerable young adults have the absolute best access to their education and access to a wide range of amenities and services that vulnerable teenagers might require. We strongly believe that Hackenby and the surrounding area does not fulfil this criteria. We would argue that it is against sustainable planning to impose such heavy commutes on children who are already likely to have difficulties accessing and attending education in the first place. Wisbeach School is nearly 40 miles away. The distance of the location of the house from Wisbeach School and those facilities and services that appeal to 11 to 18 year olds will be a considerable distance from the property. This will mean an excess number of daily car trips needed to operate the home and this will be far in excess of a usual residential home. This will impact traffic flow, noise levels in a quiet residential village and is contrary to local planning policy. Many of the residents in Chapel Street are retired or vulnerable. It does not ensure their safety and needs of our community. We have no street lighting and the house leads out onto a remote fen road. I feel this could pose a safety issue for the young adults in Cambion's care too, particularly if absconding or anti-social behaviour is an issue. Concerns raised with the planners and Cambion care have only increased our anxieties and fears. There has been a lack of clarity, frequent U-turns, changes to planning, changes to staffing, changes to transport. It would seem that planning potential have changed their story to make their case fit. Cambion's response regarding the safety of their children, their staff and the wider community are conditional. This combined with a high staff turnover does not send us a reassuring message. Quite aside from the number of objections within our village, I feel it now poses issues concerning potential stigma to those residents of the home, should this application be approved. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Now, why, no, why? why am I? Okay, thank you, Mrs. Speakman. Um, could I move on, please, to uh, Mr. Lawrence Coulson? Mr. Coulson, please. Good afternoon, councillors. Our objections to this planning application are based on the unsuitability of the proposed location. Hackenby has a distinct lack of facilities and transport links, which will impact on the welfare of the care homes children. Due to their schooling in Wisbeach, some 36 plus miles away, these children will have little opportunity for interaction with school friends. The comings and goings of staff 
and school run vehicles will generate much extra traffic and general disturbance on what is a quiet and purely residential street. The neighbourhood is mostly occupied by retired and elderly residents. Throughout this application, there has been a lack of consistency by both Canby and care homes and planning potential. And this, together with various contradictory statements, increases our concerns and raises our objection to this application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Coulston. Uh, could I move on to uh, <coughs> Lynn McBride, please, who will speak for the application? Yep. Members, thank you for listening to me today. I've never spoken at a planning committee before, and this is a very daunting experience. However, having heard about the application and the interest it has attracted, particularly the negative comments about the proposed use and the children, I felt the need to speak. I understand that planning permission for a small scale children's home for up to three children between the ages of 11 and 18 is proposed. I too have spent time researching Cambian and have read a number of the Ofsted reports associated with their homes across Lincolnshire and beyond. These are mainly rated as good or outstanding. The carers would be carefully selected and suitably trained and qualified for the role, which will include ensuring the safety of those children whilst in their care, which I think we all agree is the priority here. I do not understand the objections raised by a small number of local residents, in particular, the concerns of the risk of harm being caused to members of the public in the surrounding area by a child residing at the care home. I have not seen any evidence of this. The sale of this property could have been taken up by a family with more than the three children being proposed here, and we would have no control, even if they did impact our amenity through comings and goings. Whereas in this case, we'd have a Cambian manager, the council and Ofsted. I see that those children's homes that have been approved within South Castephen also have conditions attached to the approval, restricting the number of children. I feel strongly about this and even walked along Chapel Street prior to the national lockdown. The majority of households had at least three vehicles with some home to five and I therefore do not understand the concern relating to the comings and goings of cars. This is normal and will not exceed what we'd expect from a family with children where visits from family, friends and even Amazon parcels are now normal occurrences. The application also details a staffing rotor. This demonstrates that there will be three or four cars parked at the property for the majority of the day in line with many of the existing homes along Chapel Street, and less in some cases. I also understand the children will attend the same schools, will travel in the same car every day, again, just like normal family home. There are many small care children homes within residential areas which operate well within the communities, and I feel that these children should be allowed to live their lives to the full in their communities without having to live alone or in a large care home without a family feel. Ofsted have deemed this property as suitable, and who are we to judge the staff and the children when measures are in place for residents to explain concerns if needed? There isn't a more regulated industry than the well-being of children. The goal for these children should be to have an ordinary family life as much as possible, where everyone gets to contribute to real relationships and are able to experience a near normal existence in the hope that they can return one day to independent living. We should be contributing to this rather than acting as a barrier, unless there are material grounds, and in this case there are none. By approving this planning proposal... Could you draw to a close, please, Lynn? Yep, these children to live a more secure and fulfilling life, which would benefit all concerned. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we now move to the applicant's agent, please, Sam Deakin, Mr. Deegan. Yeah, good afternoon, Chair and members. Um, my name is Sam Deegan. I am the agent acting on behalf of the Cambian Group. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I hope you've had a chance to read my briefing note. The purpose of the care home is to create a safe, nurturing environment akin to a family home for children that have suffered trauma. Ofsted, the re regulator, 
have said and deemed that this location and the house is acceptable. 44 Chapel Street is a four bed detached house and benefits from being surrounded by large gardens to the front and rear. The property also benefits from ample off street parking with sufficient space for the carers to park their cars. This home is perfect and provides an environment to support these children. Paragraph 6.20 of the committee report confirms that the principle of the proposed care home in this location is acceptable and accords with local policy H4 and SP6. But despite this, the officer's recommendation is to refuse my client's application based on the arrival and departure of vehicles. I am somewhat baffled by this recommendation. Planning inspectors regularly argue that care homes of this type are not materially different to typical family homes. A family could occupy this property and have four cars parked on the driveway. There is no difference. It is extremely unusual for concerns to be raised about comings and goings of vehicles for a home with such a small number of children. No evidence has been provided by the council to justify this reason for refusal. The staff will arrive and then leave the home at the end of their 24 hour shifts between eight and nine in the morning. The children will travel together in the same car to the same school. The, child, the children, whilst under the care of my client, will never own their own car. And sadly, they will not receive visits from family or friends. The cars arriving and leaving the property will be owned by the four carers. That's it. The Highways Authority raised no objection to the proposal, nor does the Council's environmental health team or the Lincolnshire Police. There is absolutely no evidence to justify the recommended reason for refusal. What the, will, what the home will do, however, is provide a much needed care and support to some of the most vulnerable members of our community. I therefore respectfully request that you overturn your officer's recommendation and vote to approve this application. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Deegan. Um, we now move on to questions, please, uh, to the applicant, uh, the, in this case, the agent. And could I remind members, please, to ask questions, any points they might wish to raise, they can raise in debate. Uh, that would be extremely helpful if members would uh, abide by that. So, Shelley, are there any members wishing to address a question to Mr. Deegan, please? Yes, Councillor Penny Milnes. Councillor Milnes, Penny, please. Uh, yes, thank you. I apologise. I don't seem to be able to get my video to work. Um, yes, um, I'd just like to ask um, why you have to choose a home that is so far away from your base of operations and the the sustainability of those transport options, A, for your staff and B, for the children travelling. And I'd like to know, I think you did mention in one of your reports that you were unable to find properties closer to Wisbeach. I just Perhaps you could cast some light onto, onto that situation for us, please. Thank you, Penny. Uh, Mr. Deegan? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Councillor Mills. Yeah, the, the, the intention of the home is to provide a, a nurturing environment in, an, in a residential setting. The, the setting itself has to be one that provides a um, quiet area that supports the therapeutic uh, rehabilitation that these children need. If they were to be placed in a more urban city centre location, for example, this would actually contradict the, uh, the, the therapeutic treatment that they require in order to overcome and be supported in the way that they, they, they need. In terms of the location of the home, you know, it, it has been given significant thought, consideration, um, it, it meets a lot of the it meets all of the requirements from a size perspective, location, the, the distance to the school um, that we, we, we've obviously talked about. Um, the, the objectors that spoke are quite right. It is a forty minute drive, um, but the, the 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 school itself is a specialist school. The, these schools aren't 
as uh, prevalent as our typical comprehensive grammar schools that, um, that we're all accustomed to, that the school itself is owned and managed by my client. A 40 minute travel, um, I don't think is uncommon to school, uh, to, to, to get to school or, or work. Um, so uh, whilst I appreciate your question, I, I really do not think that the, the location is rural or inappropriate. And the committee report does not, does not disagree with that claim. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Mr. Deegan. Uh, Shelley, next uh, member to, to ask a question of the applicant. Councillor Phil Diltz. Councillor Diltz, Phil, please. The question I intended asking was exactly the same one that Councillor Milnes has already asked, so I was going to withdraw, but I, but I would just sort of ask a question, if I may, to Mr. Deegan, um, and thank you for your presentation. Um, can you just confirm that, there's, that there is no intention then, um, given that they're going to be going to school I'm not sure if you said 40 miles away or 40 minutes away, um, um, which is a big round round trip, I've got to say. Um, uh, can you just confirm that, um, that, that they, there is no intention for the children to integrate into the local community? It's, to be honest, there's, the, the idea of the home is, of course, to integrate into the community. But the level in which that will happen is very much dependent on the children that live in the home. And at this moment in time, I, I've got no information on, you know, those children. I, I, for safeguarding issues, I cannot share that information. But of course, Cambian pride themselves on being good neighbours. The Cambian manager um, that will run the home um, has actually attended the, a meeting that we had with residents, has attended and spoke at parish council meetings. They will be accountable. Um, so. The way in which these homes operate across the country is that they become um, known entities where there is someone to go to in the event um, that the local community have questions um, or have any concerns that they wish to discuss with the home manager. Um, I, I can't be any more open and transparent than that. Um, in integration into the community is obviously that's the end goal. That's the achievement. That's what we want to strive for for these children. Um, and we believe that this home will certainly help provide that for them. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Deegan. Uh, you mentioned that, if I may just uh, jump in here, you mentioned the home manager. Is that a manager living on site or is there a, a man? Uh, Yes, so effectively what we have is we have carers, three carers that work with the children on a 24 hour shift basis. In addition to the three carers, there is one home manager that is on site for, for approximately 12 hours a day. The, the times that we've given within the staff rotor is an eight in the morning till an eight in the, peer, uh, eight in the evening. Sorry, so so there's, there's... Yes, very much there seven days a week. Yeah, but he doesn't actually live on site. Uh, no, sorry. No. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, sorry, Shelley. Uh, next uh, question, please, from... Um, I've got uh, in Selby's questions to the officer, um, Councillor David Bellamy. David, to Mr Deegan, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. <clears throat> I just wanted to ask if any of the children will come from Lincolnshire. Yes, I, I can't give exact locations, but yes, that, that's certainly the intention. Thank you. Next question to Mr Deegan, or next member to ask a question to Mr Deegan, please. I can't see any more um, questions for Mr Deegan. They are only for the officer at the moment. Thank you, Shelley. Mr Deegan, thank you for your presentation and for the frank way you answered the questions. Very much appreciated. We'll move on to questions to the uh, case officer. Questions to Peter Lifford, please. Councillor Ian Shelley? Yes, Councillor Ian Selby. Councillor Selby, Ian, please, to uh, Peter Lifford. Thank you very much today, Mr Chairman. Um, I don't have no local knowledge of, of Hackenby. I don't know very well. I know, I know Morton, which is probably about a, a mile away, I would think. Uh, can you therefore tell me, please, I know there's a church in the village. What other facilities are available um, to uh, to youngsters or, uh, in, in Hackenby? It does look a relatively large village, I have to say, looking at, look at it from the Google Maps, which is always very helpful. You know, it seems to be a lot bigger village than, say, for example, a, a village called North Witham. Uh, 
Um, so I appreciate uh, um, your comments on, on what's available facilities wise uh, in Hackenby Place. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Peter? Um, yeah, is the just is the chairman, uh, the parish council chairman, still on the call? Would he be able to? Because I, I don't have it to my fingertips. Would he be able to advise what facilities there are? Uh, he might well be, but it's not appropriate in terms of okay. the constitution, Peter. Right. Um, well, I say, um, can you just leave that with me, and I'll see what I can find. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I know how many residents there is in Hackenby. If okay. that's any use. Well, let's let's stick to uh, let's stick to the question. So, Peter, you you Ian. Yes, I'll, I'll wait to hear for him to come back. So, thank, but thank you in advance. Okay, thank you, Ian. Uh, next uh, member to put a question to the case officer, Shelley. Councillor Penny Milnes. Councillor Milnes, Penny, please. Uh, yes, sorry, I didn't get it in in time to ask the agent, um, but either one of you might be able to answer my question. Um, and when the um, agent says yes, it is his intention to house children from Lincolnshire, um, what evidence have we of this? Have they um, got a statement from Lincolnshire County Council? Um, so is there any evidence behind that statement, please? We are deviating from uh, asking questions of the case officer, but uh, Mr Deegan, are you able to answer that? Um, I, I certainly can come in if it's appropriate, Chair. Um, in, in terms of the my client, they work with the um, the County Council uh, Children's Services Department. Um, so, in terms of the regulator Ofsted, the the home, given its location, the children will come from the Lincolnshire area. That 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 is a given. What I, what I cannot answer is where um, exactly they will come from. Um, and I, I appreciate that's a vague response, but I, I just don't have that information. I I, I do apologise. Thank you, Mr. Deegan. Penny, is that satisfactory? Um, I'd just like a little bit more clarification, please, um, Sam. Um, when you say the regulator and the position of the home, it would be a given that the children would be coming from the Lincolnshire area. Could you clarify that for me, please? It, it, yeah, absolutely. So, in terms of the location of the home, obviously, given the county it sits in, um, in order for the services to be provided and regulated in the way um, that they have to work in effectively conjunction with the uh, Lincolnshire County Council. So therefore, in order to demonstrate uh, and to bring forward, um, uh, allocate, sorry, the respective children, they have to have been effectively come from that area. Um, in, in terms of the process um, and where these children exactly will come from, I, 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 I don't have that information. So, can you just clarify for me, Sam, then, last thing, sorry about this. It's okay. Uh, because um, they, they have concerns about children coming out of area uh, from adjoining authorities, and um, this is uh, obviously a, a national issue as well as something that could concern us in this district. So, I'm just wondering, you know, how you can be so certain that the children will come from Lincolnshire? I, in, in terms of certainty, it's the information that I've been provided by my client. Okay, I think I don't think we can go any further with that one, Penny. Um, Shelley, are there any further questions? We actually should be asking questions. Thank you for uh, coming back, uh, Mr. Deegan. Appreciate it. Um, Shelley, we uh, questions to the case officer, please. No further questions indicated, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Chairman. Peter speaking. Yes, Peter. Right, I've had a quick search on um, Google Maps and the Parish Council's website. It would appear that they have a church. Um, it's got on here, there's a Hack Hackenby Baptist Chapel, but I've got a feeling that's been converted into residential, and they have uh, a public house, and that's about it for facilities in Hackenby. Well, thank you for going to that trouble, Peter. I hope, that, I hope that answers uh, Councillor Selby's uh, question. No, no shop or anything like that, Peter. Not that I can see. Um, I'll, I'll carry on looking, but not that I can immediately see. Thank you, Connor. Appreciate it. 
Okay. Could I come in there as I live local and I have local knowledge? Uh, yes, Helen. There is a pub and there is a church and that is it. Thank you very much indeed. If there are no further questions to the case officer, we can move to debate. Uh, Shelley, any member indicator they wish to contribute in a debate? Um, I've got Councillor Penny Milnes. Councillor Milnes, Penny, please. Thank you. My um, my chat seems to be very delayed and a bit out of sync, but I'll, I'll go first if that's uh, the way it needs to be. Um, I think... Um, the children's homes, Sam couldn't give me uh, an exact answer on whether they're coming from our area or not. Um, and out of area is, is a problem. And I have a report here that Lincolnshire receives more than four times as many children as they send out of area. We have also that report from LCC. There is also nationally a great concern about children being sent a long way from their local area to live in a children's home. Um, and also the, the traveling for children, I think it's an hour from, from this home to Wisbeach, not 40 minutes, I think it's 40 miles in an hour. Uh, so to me, the, the, there are quite a few issues here beyond just the car parking at the front of the house. Um, the planning inspector has said that the change of use, the reason it's a change of use is because the character would change materially from an ordinary dwelling house. And I think we've seen some indications of that, haven't we, with staff coming and going. The children probably won't integrate. I, I can't imagine the, um, the facilities in Hackenby. There, there is nothing for these teenagers, which... Um, is probably of a concern for their outside school time uh, activities. Staff coming and going, it is a business. I think um, C2 uses, we have to look beyond the current applicant. I think we have to look at what children could be housed there at any time. And there are material considerations such as excessive noise, this antisocial behaviour or absconding can be stressful for local residents and we do have to give that amenity consideration. I read through the case histories of the planning inspectorate. It's rather a confusing world of, of how they look at these problems. But I think for us, what worries me is this small village um, being the right environment actually for these children. There is no evidence in any of the reviews of children's homes that um, a small village or um, creates this better environment. And I do worry about the sustainability. So I'm, I'm beginning to think, you know, that we, we're putting forward a reason for refusal on just the noise and disturbance from car parking, but actually there are some other problems around noise and disturbance. But also, I think, you know, we've got um, other problems of sustainability and travel. So, um, SD1, SP1, well, this is a small village. Is it really the place to be locating these businesses? And um, the smaller villages, are these communities really able to accommodate um, a, a use, a change of use of this nature? And I'm not against children being looked after. I don't think any of us are, and I think the parish council have made that point. It really is a question of, is this the right place? Is it local? Um, and is it compromising our village's nature and character? And I think there are policies in our local plan that refer to all those issues that we might have. I also have some statistics that were received on a police call out to another home, but one properly regulated by Ofsted, where in two years there were 13 call outs by the police, all in the middle of the night. So we do have to consider these problems, and I'm not happy that children's homes, mainly from out of area, I haven't seen evidence of need for our area, can impact on our communities. 
I might say more later, but um, I'll, I'll leave that for the debate. People yeah. to contribute further to the debate. You say this is the debate, Penny. Yes, I know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Any further members uh, wishing to contribute to debate, please, Shelley? Yes, the Vice Chairman, Councillor Judy Smith. Uh, Vice Chairman, uh, Councillor Judy Smith. Judy, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, yes. Oh, well, 44 Chapel Street is opposite houses with all large frontages and adequate parking. 44 also has a large frontage, so plenty of room for staff parking their cars and movements, and a very spacious garden around the back of the house. Plenty of room for the youngsters to get outside and uh, play, play football, games, whatever, but have a good run round and plenty of fresh air. Hackenby, when we went through Hackenby Village yesterday to number 44, which is right on the edge of the village, as you know, you would notice that there's plenty of building development going on in Hackenby. So hopefully, eventually, there may be a good um, number of uh, youngsters who might want to form a youth club or something like that, or the church get something going, and so that will um, <clears throat> help there. And of course, it's a farming community, so at certain times of the year, you get some very large farming equipment moving for the, through the village, which isn't exactly silent. Um, <clears throat> I, I am unsure about the distance they're probably going to have to travel to school if they're going to Wisbridge, when we've got facilities, schools at Morton and um, Bourne. Um, Another thing is, many youngsters have suffered through this year of lockdown, and who knows how much longer this will go on. <clears throat> and these homes could be much in demand. We must be prepared to help our youngers in these very strange youngsters in these very strange times, and hope that they will be cared for and learn a good way of life and be ready to enjoy a more stable and fulfilling life. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Any further members wishing to contribute, uh, Shelley? Councillor Ian Selby. Councillor Selby, Ian, please. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Um, I've been a little bit torn on this um, this application and on deciding on which way to go. I do look very much like the, the positive thoughts of, uh, of Councillor Judy Smith uh, a few moments ago. Now, my, my thoughts are, are, are this, I mean, um, the size of the village. I mean, I was brought up in a, in a small village, Mr Chairman. It had two pubs and it had a church. It did have a, a shop at one point, but we lost that when I was very, very young. But, you know, it very, very similar to, to this. And, you know, it was out in the countryside and, and, uh, and yeah, I, I, I was happy where I was being where I was brought up. And I look at this village and I think, well, would I be happy to be brought up in this village? You know, even if I had uh, disabilities, and I have to say, yes, I would. It's, you know, it does look a good village, tranquil, um, got a lot going for it, despite the fact it's got no shop. But I do like the positive thoughts of Councillor Judy Smith, which, which says, says possibly in the future they may have, you know, uh, further facilities, you know, youth, youth facilities in the future, which, which would be really positive. And I also have to say as well, you know, if this is, if this is acceptable and good enough for offset, and it should be acceptable for us from that perspective. However, and then on the other hand, we, we've got this, the, the distance that they go to their school, uh, as Councillor Dilks um, um, touched upon. Uh, a round trip, that is quite some round trip, it really is. Um, so, yeah, that's the, it's the balance that we've, we have to find um, with regarding this. Um, would I want to be brought up in this village? Yeah, I, I, no problem with that whatsoever. And uh, would I be happy for these children to be brought up in this village? Yes, I, I think I would, Mr Chairman, I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Shelley, I noticed uh, Jeff Upton has indicated he wishes to speak. Jeff, do you want to come in now? 
If that's okay, Chairman. Absolutely uh, fine. Again, hopefully my video's working. Is that? Uh, well, we can hear you, but can't see you yet. <laughs> yes, I can see you now. Yes. Yes, oh. I can see you now. Yeah, sorry, I think I'm having similar issues to certain, certain 100% at the moment. Um, yeah, in terms of uh, the issues, obviously various uh, areas raised through this um, proposal. Um, it, it, it is... Uh, you are breaking up, Jeff. Can you hear me, Jeff? We have lost you, Jeff. Okay, can we move on and come back to Jeff when he uh, regains connectivity? Who is the next uh, member wishing to contribute, please, Shelley? Councillor Helen Crawford. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Crawford, Helen, please. Lovely. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, it saddens me to hear what people have said. It, it smacks very much of not in my backyard. I'm sorry to hear that most people assume that the children are bad ones, that they're going to cause antisocial behaviour and the police are going to get involved. Not all children are like that. Some children have had horrific childhoods and they need peace and quiet and tranquil places so they can recover. And this, I think, would be one of those places. It does sadden me to hear what people have said. They don't know the children. They don't know what the conditions of the children have been in the past. They're just all assuming the worst and not all children are bad and it's not all their fault. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Jeff, I believe you're back with us. It might be helpful, Jeff, to leave your camera off to assist with the connectivity, but I'll leave that with you. Thank you, Chairman. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. Um, yeah, I've got a face for radio, that's for sure. Um, so you, you and so, me both. <laughs> thank you, Chairman. Um, the yeah, obviously a plethora of issues have been raised today. I think the um, the committee report uh, sets out the the considerations, obviously, in terms of the assessment in this particular case, and I think the focus is on uh, clearly the concerns. Um, in the report about the comings and goings and the potential noise and disturbance that this proposal would um, result uh, result in. Uh, and we feel that that is um, a le legitimate planning concern in this case. Um, I know there are areas that have been explored uh, in terms of where uh, children come from that to my mind, as we've said, it is uh, a wider a picture, you know, in terms of geography of, um, you know, requirements in terms of where uh, children uh, uh, come from in terms of requiring care. Um, and our main focus should be on the suitability of this particular site to uh, cater for the particular use rather than where particularly where people come from i think the critical thing um is looking at uh, the issues as we have done in the report there's been reference to other areas such as local facilities and and travel um travel being a particular concern raised but similarly if this property were used for normal residential use uh, the occupants of that house you know would be traveling to various facilities to to deal with their day-to-day -day, uh, needs as well so I think it's more and that's what the committee report has tried to do focusing on the legitimate planning issues uh, raised by this proposal and I think the, the recommendation uh, that's been put forward shows an appropriate balance between considering the plethora of issues we have to deal with and the legitimate unresolved planning concerns that officers have with the proposal. Uh, and I don't know whether uh, Phil Jordan wants to add anything to that, whether there's anything that I haven't quite covered, uh, but I think it is focusing down on that uh, quite localised issue of noise and disturbance that um, has been put forward in the conclusion in the report and the recommendation before us today. Thank Phil. you, Jeff. Uh, we've 
Sorry, had you finished? Yeah, it's just whether there was anything I hadn't quite covered with Phil with losing my connectivity. Uh, was there anything else, Phil? That... Can, I, can, I, can I bring Phil yeah. in uh, yeah. after with this? Yeah, yeah. I believe two or three more members wishing to ask questions. Shelley? Okay. And then we'll bring Phil in uh, when they, those questions have been asked. Yes, we've got Councillor Phil Dilks. Thank you. Councillor Dilks, Phil, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I will be supporting the officer's recommendation. Um, and I hear, you know, just to comment on what uh, Councillor Selby said, yeah, I do understand what you said, you know, growing up in a, in a nice village and that you'd be happy to be doing that. Uh, me too. But would you be happy, I wouldn't, in um, being uh, taken to school? I've looked it up while we've been talking on uh, the AA route planner. It's 38.6 miles, not quite 40 miles, each way uh, to school. And, and it says it takes 59 point something minutes. OK, now that's on a good day. Um, and, you, you, you know, I would remind you that Woods Beach is in another county. And... I just question whether or not, and I don't know the answer to this, has, you know, there's lots of houses in Wisbeach, I've got to say, but does Wisbeach or the local authority that covers Wisbeach have a policy about um, children's, this kind of children's homes? Are they welcoming to it? I don't know. I question that. Um, but, you know, to each day, these kids are going to have to be taken from um, Hackenby uh, through Gosberton, all the way to Gosberton, Sutterton, Hull Beach, Long Sutton, um, somewhere else, oh, Sutton Bridge, Tid St Giles, and eventually, you know, what time are they Are they really going to get on an icy, cold winter's morning along those Fen roads? You can't always say it's going to be an hour. It could take you well over two hours, that journey, uh, on a winter's morning, I've got to say. And also that, that brings into question the safety of children. You know, why would we want to be going down that route? Um, as Judy, um, uh, the vice chairman, quite rightly said, we've got local schools here. Yes, I know you, you, you um, are looking for um, specialist schools um, for the children. But it, I, I've got to say, I do worry about, you know, putting children in a, in a um, children's home um, in, in this area. And... I just can't see the integration in the local community, which I think it would be is a valuable part of education um, for any child. You know, um, I just think you should go to school in your local community where possible. I understand that. Um, but I, I just don't believe that there, there are not suitable properties nearer the school uh, to which these children um, would be expected to attend. Um, I, I was horrified to, to, to see that aspect, and I don't think, um, I do not agree with um, uh, Sam, the agent, when he says it's, it's normal for kids to, uh, not in this part of the world, to, to um, be spending an hour on a school journey each way. I just think that's wrong. We should not be encouraging that. I'll be voting uh, with a recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Before I ask for the next speaker, Shelley, <coughs> I notice Martha has uh, indicated she wishes to uh, make a comment. Martha, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy. I'm, I should have said I'm happy to recommend the um, that if if it's helpful. Thank you for that, Phil. Martha, propose. Propose. Sorry, I meant yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Um, I just wanted, just following on from some of the comments and obviously what Councillor Dutt said, and to reiterate what um, Mr. Upton said in that. Obviously, in, term, in, in terms of what we're considering here, it's the use, the building, the planning use. In terms of if this were a private residential development, uh, we wouldn't obviously be necessarily looking at where parents were sending their children to school and the distance travelled, as Mr. Upton said. So I would just urge members to consider the planning use of the building as a care home. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Martha. Thank you for that uh, guidance. Uh, next. Uh, Contributor, please, Shelley. Uh, it looks like Councillor Judy Smith has requested to speak again, Chairman. Okay, Judy. Thank you very much for letting me speak again, Chairman. Uh, first of all, yes, there was a Baptist church in in Dyke. It is a very small building, and it has a lot of historic interest. It's now known as a Primitive Methodist and a Baptist 
chapel, um, but it creates quite a lot of interest. That's one thing. Um, if you yesterday probably you all turned off the main road and went straight down into Hackenby, but if you go down to Morton Church, there is Hackenby Lane, which takes you along uh, a sort of quite rural setting. There's a football ground down there, and um, from Hackenby to Morton, I would say is less than a mile, and there are shops there, and I'm sure there are youth uh, groups and other facilities there for the young ones. Thank you for that, Judy. The large shops, there's a co-op supermarket and there's a village shop as well with a post office. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Judy, for that additional information. Uh, Shelley, uh, next contributor, please. Councillor Harish Bisnathsing. Councillor Bisnath Singh, Harish, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members. You know, it is quite a, quite a good uh, debate here. But what actually um, I would like to mention here, we got we got three children that are going to be housed in uh, in this particular building. Childrens, different different childrens have got different needs and different care. Uh, uh, packages. What my concern is, as per the officer's recommendations, is we have got, you know, the, you have got the children going to the school. Are they going to go in one car? Are they going to go in three cars? Or are they going in a bus? But also the movements of the traffic. You've got early morning, you've got the staff arrivals, and, and also leaving every 12 hours, you know. It's been said here that it is, we are only considering the use of the building uh, as, as planning use of the building, but this is being used as a business for providing care to children. Yeah, so we have got a number of, of traffic that's going every 12 hours. The, tra the, the traffic will be changing there. This is in the middle of a perfectly settled community, and with a very little facilities for young children to be there to integrate uh, properly. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm afraid I'll be supporting the officer's recommendations, and I'll be quite happy to second it as well if that's uh, if nobody has done that. Thank you. Councillor David Bellamy. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. You sorry, I was on. Oh, sorry, I was. I'd, I'd, I'd muted myself. Yeah, <laughs> David. Uh, just to uh, get back to what uh, uh, Jeff said and Martha, uh, we've already turned one of these down on sustainability issues, and that was endorsed by the uh, uh, head of planning at the time as being a legitimate reason for turning it down. Uh, that's just one point. Uh, the, the other point I'd like to make, uh, 7.4.1 of the report, um, we, it just concerns me that we're using uh, that section 109 of the MPPF now to trump uh, sustainability, sustainability issues as well as uh, uh, road safety issues. Uh, with the, the Morton, uh, uh, the new estate at Morton one, we, we were raising uh, uh, safety issues and uh, the 109 out of the MPPF was put back in our court to say that, uh, it, you know, it was by highways, that it was, uh, you know, legitimate. But now we're using the same clause to to try and get around all the sustainability issues as well. And that, that concerns me. Thank you. Thank you, David. Next speaker, please, Shelley. Councillor Jackie Smith. Okay, Councillor Jackie Smith. Jackie, please. Thank you. Um, pleased to be able to speak. Um, I'm sure that uh, a number of you know that uh, when this has come up before, I have uh, spoken um, about my experiences of these um, homes for small numbers of children. Um, <clears throat> uh, I have visited a number of them and I've seen the work that they do. Um, not just in this area, but in other areas. 
There are unfortunately a lot of children whose parents, for a variety of reasons, cannot cope. And these places frequently um, look after those um, children from ages five up to 17, 18. And I also know from experience that some of the children, when they do have to cut, when they do leave, are very, very pleased at the work that the places that they've had, the support that they've had. And indeed, a lot of, quite a few of them continue to maintain uh, contact with the people that have been looking after them. Uh, surely, to goodness, it's much better to make sure that we're getting the children into the right places than worry far more about the places um, and getting them there in a trip. I know of quite a number of uh, youngsters, even now at schools in Grantham and the area, who spend quite a lot of their time travelling to and from school and home. So uh, I don't think we've got to worry too much about that. Let's give these children some of the uh, opportunities that they deserve so that they can grow up into a, um, a good society and be a welcome member of society. So I'm going to be for this, I'm afraid, and I hope that some of you at least will support me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jackie. Next speaker, please, Shelley. Looks like we've got a further request from Councillor Helen Crawford. That's, is there anybody later that hasn't spoken yet? Um, uh, Councillor Robert Reid. Councillor Reid. Robert, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've listened to the debate and I have put in the chat box. Um, I hope it's appropriate um, to actually have done so that I am happy to second the officer's proposal. Thank you. So we have it proposed and seconded twice. Uh, Shelley, uh, is it Councillor Crawford to come back, Helen? Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to reply to Councillor Dilks, um, when you have specialist schools, which these children um, will attend, they are very few and far between. We have a school, Willoughby, in Bourne, and a lot of children attend there, and they do have to travel an hour, but that's because there is a lack of specialist schools. Um, thank you. Thank you, Helen. Any further new uh, speakers, please, Shelley? I don't believe anyone that has requested to speak um, hasn't spoken yet, no. So who's next in the chat box? Um, next we have, after Helen Crawford, is Councillor Penny Milnes again. OK, can I ask you to be brief so that we don't uh, start going round in circles, please? Can I notice Ian Selby wishes to come back as well. Penny? Um, I'll be very brief. I just want to tackle one or two misconceptions. Um, I've been reading quite a lot of reviews on these children's homes and particularly out of area ones. Getting on for 50 percent just under do abscond. And when they've interviewed the children, they're not happy to be away from area and away from uh, everything they know. Now, these are interviews with the actual children, so i just like to put a balance on that, um, that it's not all an, a, an idyll. Um, what I would like to ask is, I would like to ask Jeff whether we can add a reason for refusal that it's an unsustainable location and the policy, um, well, I've got several policies I'm trying to quote, um, SD1, but also under our allocations sp1 and sp2 where in the smaller villages it's only for the housing needs of local people thank you thank you i'll ask jeff to ponder that one while we bring is ian selby the next one to uh, come in yes chairman Councillor yeah, selby you. ian please yeah thank you for allowing me to come back as other members have done as well um do i think the property the village and the community is suitable and yes i do actually I do think it's appropriate and unsuitable. Um, the problem is, and I totally get where Phil's coming from, and I know Phil, Phil is a caring guy, so I, you know, I totally get that. You know, I think about the mental health of, of the youngsters that would have to travel that sort of distance, um, you know, during the winter months, and also when you've got fog down some of those dikes, 
you know, the, the roads with the dikes, you know, horrendous roads at times. Oh, my thoughts are this, Mr. Chairman, that, that, you know, we have such specialist schools here in Grantham. And, you know, it's got to be a much better and a much safer road, a quicker and shorter route, you know, to attend a school in Grantham from Hackham Bay. Um, and as I think the property is suitable, I would really actually like to support the, the application. Um, so, yeah, that's my thoughts. And I think they should find a, you know, a, a better location for the school for these youngsters, in my view. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Jeff, could you respond to the points that Penny made, please? Yes, I've got my uh, yeah, Thank I've you. got my audio on. I'm not going to risk video again, Bob uh, Chairman. Sorry, okay. uh, if no, that's, that's okay. okay. I don't mind either. <laughs> okay. It's not chair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay, Chairman. Um, yes, um, no, I think um, in in this instance, I don't think that would be a legitimate reason to look at oh. sustainability. Uh, we've already got uh, a house that could result in a, a residential dwelling that could result in a number of journeys and it's also worth considering that these types of locations you know it's it's a village where we'd also allow infill development you know in terms of you know the sustainability of the location generally um but but in terms of the use i'd compare it um you know to its uh, you know, standard uh, re re residential use. Sorry, Chairman. Rosemary, could you keep your microphone muted, please? Lord? So, so in, in this instance, I, I would compare it to that um, situation and would say that it wouldn't be um, a, a reasonable. Um, reason to add uh, to what we've already presented um, and 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 take it forward on on that basis thank you Jeff I'm conscious that uh, we've been deliberating this application now for well over an hour are there any new issues that uh, any member wishes to raise please there's no new requests from members they're just members that have already spoken chairman well, unless there's anything new to contribute, could I, uh, um, who, who's, uh, request, who's requesting to speak again, Shelley? Uh, we've got further requests from Councillor Judy Smith. Um, can we, can we, be, who, who else is after Judy Smith? Um, Councillor Penny Milnes. Right, I'll take those two and then I think we ought to move to the vote. So if we can be brief, please, uh, Judy. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. I, all I wanted to say was children do travel to the Willoughby School in Bourne, which is a specialist school, and they come from a, as far away as Lincoln, which is 36 miles, and they come from Peterborough and Stamford, I've even heard of some coming from Melton Mowbray. And they come to Bourne by uh, organised transport every day and are taken home. And the age group is from less than one year old up to 20 years old. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Uh, Penny, please, final con contribution, and then we'll move on to the vote. Yes, thank you. I wonder if Jeff could just clarify me because I am confused. Um, I do accept that this is a change of use to C2 and we're talking about it being like an ordinary dwelling house. It does have these material differences and sustainability is one. It's uh, got employment, it's got travelling, it's got children out of area um, and we do have um, as a local authority to look at the wider impacts of these applications rather than it just being as a house and um, that was a, an appeal decision said uh, about that and also you know our policy SP2 with the smaller villages it really is for local housing needs and I'm, I'm confused um, Jeff maybe you, you can just clarify it all for me, why SP1, SP2 and SD1 are not um, significant material 
considerations. Okay, Jeff. Uh, after Jeff has given that reply, I will move on to the vote. Thank you. Thanks, Chairman. Yes, I think the uh, the considerations um, are as set out in the report um, in terms of the location. It is. Uh, I was trying to intimate through um, you know allowing infill development uh, relatively. Uh, sustainable and could take further development. The it, the nuance is the change between um, the residential use and the the C2 use. Um, we I just don't think a sustainability argument is there. It's more, as I say, people could be um, you know uh, going uh, a distance with their you know, day-to-day -day, uh, use as a C3 dwelling. Um, and we've looked at that, you know, quite carefully in proposing the issues that we have in the recommendation around noise and disturbance. I just don't think there's a legitimate sustainability argument on this particular case. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that, Jeff. Um, so, uh, members, uh, we've had it proposed by Councillor Dilk, seconded by Councillor Reid and uh, Harris Pisnell Singh, uh, that we support the officer recommendation for refusal. So, vote four is for refusal. Anita, please, can we move to the vote? Yes, certainly, Mr. Chairman. Councillor David Bellamy. Four. Councillor Bishnell Singh. Four. Councillor Crawford. Abstain. Councillor Dilks. Four. Councillor Exton. Four. Councillor Cabry Brown. Four. Councillor Milnes. Four. Councillor uh, Reed. Four. Councillor Selby. Really sorry about this. I'm going to go against. Thank you. Councillor Jackie Smith. Councillor Jackie Smith. Jackie, are you with us? Yes. Uh, we we're voting on the proposal for refusal. Can't hear you, Jackie. Uh, I can't understand why, because uh, we I'm, can hear I'm you now. muted. We can hear you now. Right. Okay, so... so we're voting. Uh, the recommendation is for refusal. So a vote for is for refusal uh, against is uh, and abstain, uh, whichever. Um, I should go against. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Judy Smith. Abstain. Councillor Bob Adams. Four. So that's eight for refusal, two against refusal, and two abstaining, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Anita. Thank, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Deegan, for staying with us over all that. Um, so we now move on to item uh, agenda item number six, please, which again is in the hands of uh, Peter Lifford. Peter. Yes, Peter, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, sorry. Thank you. No, Thank no you, problem. Chairman. Let me um, say, just share my, uh, get the screen up. Can't see it yet, Peter. No, I've got loading at the moment. Yeah, so have I. <laughs> 
Mr. Chairman, can you just tell me it's Rosemary here? Yes, I can hear you, Rosemary. Oh, well, <laughs> on, the, on the screen, whilst I'm speaking to you, it says mute my mic. Well, we when can I... hear you. You're muted now. It's all right. It's gone back to front for some known. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going on to mute now. Okay. Okay, Rosemary. Thank you. Yeah, apologies for this. It's got, probably clearly got a long way to travel. Yeah, I think we we had this problem with a previous one, didn't we? Yes. Nothing yeah. Yours is enough. <laughs> probably gone to Whiz Beach. Whoops. <laughs> I think it's probably overuse of my internet. <laughs> ah. Oh, there we go. Right. Yeah, Can we've got it. Thank you, Peter. Excellent. <laughs> So, <laughs> apologies for the delay there. Um, right, so yes, this is application S21820. Uh, so, it's application at Grange Farm, South Witham Road, North Witham. Uh, so, it's an application for change of use from a dwelling house uh, into a small children's home, um, catering up to four children between the ages of six and 16. So, I'm the uh, presenting officer, Peter Lifford. So, so once again, the, the issues are the principle of the use, the impact of the use on the character of the area, impact on neighbouring properties, um, and any highways issues. So, so for a bit of um, context, so the application site is at the bottom of, the, of that um, map, with the red arrow north with them. So at the top of the map is the nearest, uh, next biggest village, uh, which is Colsterworth. So zooming in a bit, uh, so that this is the site in relation to the village. So the application site is in the red square in the centre of the screen. Uh, you see that there, to the north is there's a of the site. There's a small um, coppice, and then you've got uh, Rectory Lane with. Uh, residential properties on the uh, north side of that lane and then opposite the site to the west you have a, it's a working farmyard um, so there is an access you can, see, you can just about see it there um, opposite the application site but I think generally that access is locked and the main access uh, into that farmyard uh, is to the north off, uh, off of Gumby Road. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So, so was, this is the application site, the outlined in red. So you've got the main uh, dwelling house in the centre of the site. You've got a detached double garage um, showing the car parking spaces as one and two, and then they're also proposing three additional car parking spaces in front of that, those garages uh, to provide um, five off-street car parking spaces. So on that, you can also see, say, they've got the existing vehicle access, and then off to the left-hand side there. So that's the, uh, the the farmyard opposite. So the existing floor plans um, showing a, a five-bedroom property. So the proposal is to change the um, change. It so you've got the children have um, a bedroom each for, to accommodate the four children, and so then also accommodation for the staff. So here are some views of the uh, the property, viewing from the, the south side, so you, can, so you see the, the main property there, where the car is parked on the verge, that, or in the entrance there, so that's the entrance into the site, so with the, uh, the flat roof garages uh, to, the, to the side there, north of the property. So this is looking back down from the north of the site, um, so you can see the house there, and then that is the, the wooded copse area that I referred to earlier. So these are the views looking to the, towards the village. Um, you just see in the centre of the shot in the distance, that's um, a road traffic sign. That's the junction with Gumby Road and Rectory Lane. 
So you say that's where the nearest residential properties are. So that's looking south, um, heading off towards South Witham. Um, as you can see, also in that, just about seeing that shot, that the site is, with, is within the 40 mile an hour limit um, of the village. So the application um, has set out in the agenda, um, so it's being recommended for approval. So consider that the, the use is acceptable. Um, the appearance of the building is to be retained, um, no adverse impact on the character of the area. So due to the location of the building and its relationship with the resident, nearby residential properties, um, there were no adverse impact on these amenities. The amenities of the occupiers of these properties in terms of noise and dis disturbance, it's got suitable off-road parking, and that the, that the proposal will have no adverse impact on the surrounding highway network. So the, the application is uh, recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Peter. Can you just leave the presentation yes. up for a minute for David? Yeah, I saw that, yeah. yeah. Thank you. David? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, thank you for the presentation, Peter. Can you just go back to the aerial shot, please, of the site? That one? Uh, no, the 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 yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that one. Yep. I'd just like to point out, uh, just to the top right, there's a, a white roof that you can see, or top left, sorry, there's a white roof. I don't know whether you can put your cursor on it or your pointer. I think it's clear enough on the screen, actually, David. Yeah, there's the crossroads there, and it's just to the top left of the crossroads. I'll just point out that's the only small recreation area in the whole village and the proximity uh, to the uh, application site. Thank you. OK, David, thank you for that. Anybody else wish to comment on the... Uh... We've got nobody the in the chat box yet, no, Chairman. No, well, we'd, first of all, there's no public speakers on this, so we go to questions to the case officer. Does anybody want the presentation left on screen before putting questions to Peter? I'll take that as a no. So uh, who's the first member wishing to put a question to uh, Peter, please, Shelley? We've got Councillor Ian Selby. Councillor Selby, Ian. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I don't know whether my video is working. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, the question to uh, Peter is, um, thank you, Peter, for the presentation. Um, South Witham is just down the road, literally a, is it a mile down the road. Can you just tell what facilities are available in South Witham, please? Thank you. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah, once again, can you leave that with me? And I'll, <laughs> I'll get back to you on that, unless um, Councillor Bellamy wishes to yeah, assist. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. It's a yeah. bit pain. Um, yeah, South Witham is similar to Colstworth, really. Probably a little bit smaller. Uh, probably hasn't got the play facilities and such a big recreational area as Colstworth. It has got its own uh, primary school as, as, as Colstworth. OK, Shelley, any further questions? To, excuse me. Any further questions to uh, Peter Lifford, please? Yes, Chairman. Councillor Harish Bisnell Singh. Thank you. Councillor Bisnell Singh. Harish, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Peter. Peter, that little white building that Bellamy, uh, uh, David uh, pointed out, you say it's a recreation centre. Uh, what sort of uh, recreation is provided there? Are there any trucks or anything like that, or is it all indoor? Can I ask? Councillor Bellamy to respond to that as uh, yeah the, uh, the buildings actually the, the village hall which is a wooden hut uh, although it has got uh, brick toilets added on to the wooden hut and it's just covered in white cladding um, the play facilities uh, there's a swing and a climbing frame and it doubles up as a caravan site, which helps bring a little bit of uh, revenue in for the village hall. Like I say, and there is a, a, a fairly small play area for the uh, for the for the village. In the aerial site, I saw that there was a church in further on. Yeah, it, that's, I take it that is more or less the centre of North Witham. 
or there any other recreational things like uh, shops or or other facilities there? Uh, no, no, there's nothing. There's a, the, we've got a letterbox. Okay, uh, this, Thank this, you. this is questions to Mr. Lifford, not to Councillor <laughs> Dolby. <laughs> any, any questions to Peter, please? Take your point, Harris, it's a bit, a bit short on the general info. Peter, any, sorry, any further questions to Peter Lifford? No further questions for the officer, no, Chairman. Well, I have got one, uh, Peter, which concerns me greatly on page 43, which is 7.3.3. Uh, and this uh, concerns me very deeply because these are children of the age of 6 to 16. And it says the, application, the applicant has stated that the children within their care will all be in some form of education which seems a little bit uh, of a strange way of putting it during the day. During non-school time, they would be under supervised care at appropriate ratios as advised by Ofsted. I uh, find this all a little bit vague and a little bit concerning, Peter. Are we able to put any more meat on that particular bone? No, I've taken that straight from their, um, their, their um, supporting documents that they submitted. Um, I say we have, I did um, in a query from Councillor Bellamy, I did query about distances that they could travel to schools um, and was advised of this um, that they can transport them up to an hour each way under Ofsted's uh, guidelines. Uh, but now that, that, what's in that report there, that's taken straight from the, um, from the information supplied by the applicants. Yeah, well, my reason for concern, uh, Peter, is knowing that area pretty well and all around it, all those schools are full to capacity. These children need specialist uh, teachers or care, uh, teaching assistants, etc. And yet the applicant has only put a very, very vague comment in 7.3.3, which uh, gives me cause for concern. Okay, uh, if the uh, uh, I'm not expecting you to answer that one, Peter, by the way. It's, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, noted, yes. Yeah. Uh, are there any further questions, please, to uh, Mr. Lifford, Peter Lifford? Councillor Shall... Penny Milnes. Sorry? Councillor Penny Milnes. Oh, right, sorry. Councillor Milnes, Penny, please. Um, yes, thank you. Um, sort of following on from what Bob has just said, really, is... Um, what do we know of the applicant and where do the children come from? And it is worrying where they think they're going to send them to school or not. Um, are they assessed before the home take out the contract from wherever their local authority is? Um, and I've read again in all these reviews that I've been conscientiously reading, you know, that Sometimes these children turn up at um, these out of area homes and they're left waiting four to six months, probably longer before they find them a school place. Um, this is all very concerning, I, I think, for, for us, not just the children. I think we discussed the children enough at Hackenby. I think we've got to start discussing the impact on, um, on our area, on our schools and our residents. I think LCC made a point, you know, that um, if they're coming from out of area, there is an impact on health, police and education, and perhaps we should take some soundings on the implications. And the very fact that coming out of area, we already have 534 children from out of area in Lincolnshire, and we've only got 634 in Lincolnshire with 30 go out of area. So it's hardly a reciprocal arrangement with all the impact on services. Again, sustainability comes into it. So my, my question is, what do we know about it? What do, um, you know, it, we don't seem to know very much. Um, we did make a big effort with the place to find out about them. And, and I think the Hackenby um, uh, applicant put in a lot of information. So perhaps we can... You could reply to that, please, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, well, Peter. Yeah, well, there's not a lot more than um, so what is in the reports. I mean, the we've got the 
in their application with their application they submitted a statement um, saying you know, how they're going to operate um, but the I mean where children come from the actual operation of the, the home is is dealt with under separate legislation with Ofsted so they they would decide you know, that, they, that any home would be working within the guidelines of Ofsted who who regulate the operation of, of children's homes uh, yes, thank you, Peter. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Because, um, again, the children who've been interviewed when they're placed in these um, remote out-of-area homes aren't very happy. Uh, and Ofsted have obviously said, oh, well, the home is fine. Um, I find it all very contradictory when here we are as a planning authority trying to decide a change of use to a business that... Um, effectively tax the um, contracts from surrounding local authorities because they're definitely not, not going to use Lincolnshire County Council. And Lincolnshire County Council have these concerns about all the children coming in. So there must be some sort of cross-referencing uh, here, surely, as to location and sustainability, again, in a small village. I don't want to go into debate on it, but I just wondered if you had any further information on any of all that. Well, I would say, I refer, <laughs> refer you back to my earlier answer. No, I mean, the, you say that, you know, one thing you say that they, they talk to the children who are unhappy, do they actually talk to the children who are happy, who are a successful product of going through this care home system? Well, again, we, have, we, we, have, we haven't got that information, have we? It's a balance in the reviews, but I, I think, again, mm. the significant number, I think it was over 60% of the children interviewed in out-of-area homes, I'm talking about now, um, feel abandoned and in a strange place, well away from home. Well, I think that's, 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 that's um, uh, a reflection on the, the general care system as a whole. I don't see that how it can be attacked. I don't really see how it can be attached to just this you know, this application we're being asked to consider here. I think there, there are. I would say there are major concerns in the running of the care system. But I say what we're looking at here is is this building and this location is that an acceptable location use of that building as a care home? That's the application that we're looking at, and that's no, that's what I think. That I believe that's what we need to consider. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'm sorry, my my machine isn't working properly again. Yes, it is. We can hear you very clearly, Rosemary. No, I know, but you can't see my message that I type on the little Shelley, blog. Shelley is looking after that. Shelley, has Rosemary got a uh, speak, please, in the chat box? I'm just checking, Mr. Chairman, but I can't see. Uh, it's not going up. Okay, you, you carry on, Rosemary. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to butt in on anyone. No, um, I, my question on this is that I, I agree with just absolutely everything Councillor uh, Milnes has said. And I don't think it is a case, as the officer has said, that we're just giving planning permission for a house to be used as a business. It isn't. Um, the people of them, with them... Um, West Witham, they've got to be thought about as well, and 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 it is it is a, a change of use from um, a normal house. Um, from what we've heard and what we've read, a lot of these children are not happy. Um, you're too near the A1 for one thing, in my opinion. Um, if if somebody wanted to do a bolt for it. Um, there could be injuries, it could be all kinds of problems to the children. I honestly don't think this house is, is one that we could should give planning permission for to be changed to a school. If it was a proper school, if it was going to be school for um, a, a house that would be taking over a, a small family that had become, um, had lost their parents or something and were going into care, it's something different, but this isn't. And, and to hear that some of these children are left in these homes with carers coming and going every so many hours to change shifts, and then they're left there for three months because you can't find them a school, it's absolutely, well, it's unbelievable, it beggars belief. 
And I don't think we should be part of it. I think this is just a business going on that's trying to... I'm sorry, I think it's a business who's... Uh, a form of business people that have decided that they will buy up uh, houses. They happen to be cheaper in Lincolnshire than anywhere else. And they'll they'll use it for schools and get paid quite a lot of money. It's not as if they're even resident themselves, these people, in the place. So, um, no, I, I don't think this house is suitable. I'm sorry, I really don't. The the previous one wasn't, so why is this one? I I don't understand it at all. Okay, Rosemary, I think um, the point I, is, sorry, I thought you were finished. My points, I'm sure I've made my points, but we should be thinking of the happiness of the children that might be coming into the district, and we should be thinking of our residents that are already sitting there and have been in that village for many, many years. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, Martha, you wish to make a comment? Uh, yes, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, just a couple of things from me. Um, first of all, obviously, just to make it clear to members that each application must be decided on its own merits, regardless of any similar applications that have come before. Um, additionally, uh, remind members that the MPPF requires um, you to wear uh like a an application such as this is also covered by separate legislation the mppf requires you to assume that that legislation does work so therefore you've been told by the um officer in this instance that actually the running of the home is covered by ofsted and the the question before you today is is this an acceptable location and is this building acceptable for for the planning use of a, of a c2 care home in terms of the running of it the MPPF requires you to assume that it works. That is a requirement under the MPPF. Thank you, Chairman. Just as a personal comment, that could be a dangerous, a dangerous assumption in some some instances, Martha. But uh, uh, that's half half tongue in cheek. Uh, okay, can we get back to uh, members on the debate, please, Shelley? Yes, we've got Councillor Harish Bisnell Singh next. Thank you, Councillor Bisnell Singh. Harish, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Th thank you, Peter, uh, for the presentation. Uh, Peter, I would like to go to paragraph 5.11, the last uh, things, where the highways department says it is important to state that there is no pavement to provide a safe walking route to and from the property. Vehicles speed through the village is a problem and it continues to be a safety problem. Speed related to the road traffic incidents are a feature of the road and uh, junctions adjacent to the property. So from that, from actually what Councillor um, uh, Rosemary Capri Brown said with regard to it, is it a suitable place for the group to have from six year old to, to 16 year olds in, in there, especially the younger children, where there's a safety element that is very, very pronounced. That road is quite open and people go at the high speed. And to your own questions, uh, would this application sit with SP4 pol uh, policy of the, uh, of the local plan? And I see SP4 1, it said, does it demonstrate clear evidence of substantial support from the local community? And from reading through the things, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, uh, the community doesn't support it. Thank you. Okay, that's uh, that's a contribution to debate. Uh, I don't think the officer needs to answer that. Uh, Shelley, any further contributions from uh, members? Um, I'm not sure if Councillor Penny Mills has um, already come back, but she's put in the um, box response. Um, so I'm not sure if she's wanting to speak further, but we've also got um, another request to speak from Councillor Ian Selby. Okay, are there any people before that that haven't spoken? Mr. Chairman, are we speaking in debate now or questions? Because no, we've, been, we, we've been in debate for a while, David. Well, I've well, been my my request's been there for quite some time, and well, I thought it was like we were asking questions. So put it in again. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Shelley. Uh, can we bring in Councillor Bellamy and then move on to uh, others, please? David. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
because of the lack of detail on on this particular application from the applicant or oh, i'm assuming that most of the children that are at the home will be teens because of the schools they've suggested that they may go to which is Grantham, Stamford, Melton, Mowbray or, or Leicester. And the reason I make that assumption is because there's two uh, primary schools fairly nearby. And also there's Corby Glen Secondary School that's quite nearby, which they haven't said they would use. So I'm not quite sure whether they're not familiar with the area. Um, my main point on this one is um, that this application will change the nature and the character of the village as stated in SP2, policy SP2. Uh, the, the application has had 16 object, uh, objectors from the whole village, which is a quarter of the whole village. Uh, the applicant has made no attempt to communicate with the parish or the village. Uh, North Witham's a very small settlement, 60 homes, 125 residents. In the village, there's 29 children now. There's never been 29 children. And 17 of those children are under the age of 10 years old. Uh, also, of the 125, 40 of the residents are over 60. Compare that with Hackham Bay which has 532 residents. So that can be as 532, North Witham has 125. North Witham is a quiet, peaceful place. That's why people come to live and stay here. There's not a single empty property in the village, and that says a lot about the village. There is a fear of crime and antisocial behaviour in the village, because when crime or antisocial uh, behaviour happens in North Witham, it always comes from the outside, never from the people in it. Uh, the applicant doesn't appear to have a website, but in the company documentation for the Ackenby application, it does detail uh, the challenging behaviours of the children. Uh, from a freedom of information request that I've got, uh, which I have here next to me, uh, from the police regarding the similar children's home in South Kestevan, the police have been called out to this one facility, this one home, 13 times in two years. The police haven't been to the 60 homes of North Witham 13 times in the last 10 years. Despite there's no, despite the fact that there's no objections from the police. Uh, in a previous application, uh, one of the speakers did note that one of the local senior officers has said that when a child absconds, it does take up the whole shift, all the personnel on the shift for the whole shift. So that's just the sort of imp the uh, impact it can have on uh, local facilities, if you like, but also the, the impact it can have on the local area. How can this development not change the nature and carriage, uh, character of the village and amenity of the people that live here? That's reflected in the 25% of the people that have objected this uh, development. Also, right next to the development, only a few yards away, is the only small play area that we've got. Uh, bearing in mind that we've got 29 children and uh, 17 of those are under 10 years old, uh, we've just managed, to, or the village has just managed to get uh, funding for £30,000 worth of new play equipment. This all could be in vain if this small play area becomes a no-go area. The, the committee should consider how the points I've mentioned affect the amenity of the ex existing residents and not just the amenity issues associated with extra traffic which the report tries to do not doing so is just ignoring the elephant in the room thank you mr chairman thank you david i'm sorry your uh, your uh, chat uh, chat function got overlooked uh, shelley uh, councillor ian selby councillor selby ian please very yeah, much, Mr. Chairman. First of all, Mr. Chairman, after this article on the agenda, can I request a comfort break, please? If we would. Um, we will be getting one, I can assure you. <laughs> excellent, thank you. 
Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, this application, I, I mean, the previous application that we discussed, I thought that was suitable, and I think this one's suitable as well, personally. I do know that I do know the building in question, um, although it is a busy road that runs alongside us, I have to say, um, you do get some speeding traffic along that road. Um, but having said that, you know, reading on the agenda, you do get a lot of negativity towards youngsters. You really do, and I don't like to see it. It's just, it is sad to see it. You know, you see comments in the agenda like number five about a limited bus service. Well, you know, to be fair to the bus companies, um, you, you have to have the need there in order to, to provide the service. If the need is not there, they're not going to provide it, are they? So, you know, so once you provide the need, then you, you've got a greater chance of getting the uh, the services that, that you want. Um, I mean, I don't like going against officers' recommendations, and I didn't like it in the last the last application. I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to support the officers on this one, I have to say, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's South Witham's just down the road. There are facilities there um, for youngsters. Um, nice to hear David say about the number of children in in, in Northwood. No, it's, it's cracking to hear that is. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to support the application, Mr. Chairman. Thank you kindly. Thank you, Ian. Shelley. Councillor Mills. Councillor Mills, Penny, please. Um, yes, thank you. That's most interesting. What Councillor Bellamy's had to say, isn't it? And I think it's repeating a lot of our concerns about um, the homes. And it's not just a question of the children. There was a planning inspector um, addressed this regulatory and Ofsted issue. That is one side of the argument. And they said that it's up to the local planning authority to determine whether the use of the building is appropriate in the wider public interest. And I think those are the issues that we're trying to get to grips with with, um, with these applications. And I totally agree with David that I think it does affect the amenity, nature and character of what is a small, compact village. The Colsterworth Neighbourhood Plan explains that North Witham is that, that it's in a rural setting. They're trying to achieve sustainable development. I know we've had that argument, but I'm still going to push on that one. Um, it is for uh, local need, and we have absolutely no evidence at all of local need, um, and, it, and so on and so on. It, it goes on. And going on to the NPPF, in plan making, and I'm now going to refer to our local plan, um, where we develop the needs for our area, and that is what our local plan was about. And we had it objectively assessed our housing needs. Um, LCC were um, asked for their comments. They asked for adult social care, not children care. The reason being, we don't need extra children's homes in the area. And um, that cooperation went through into the local plan, and that's why we we don't ask for children's homes. So I think local need is still an issue for us. Um, and I think reflecting our local needs is important for us. And I am still going to carry on about the fact that it is a change of use to a C2 children's home, a business, um, for out of area children in this instance. And we've still got all these issues. I'm going to recommend we refuse this application. I think we've got policy reasons to do it. And um, uh, I think um, we should be making a stand, as we say, uh, as to the inappropriateness of these homes in our little villages and our rural areas without a proper uh, reason to be there. Um, so that's my, uh, I'm going to um, propose that we refuse it. Can Thank I you. second that, please? So Rosemary seconded and uh, Councillor Bellamy uh, indicated he would second it, so that's fine. Um, I, I, I have a lot of concerns about this. Sorry? Somebody wanted to speak? Shelley, is there anybody else wishing to speak? Uh, there's no further requests to speak, no. Thank you. Um, I suggest that Councillor Bellamy seconds it, and then I will just vote, okay? 
Okay, well, it, it, the names aren't recorded in the minutes, uh, Rosemary, so uh, it, uh, from that point of view, it's, <coughs> it's not uh, relevant, but I think it's good that two of you are prepared to second it, so thank you for that. Um, I, this is not a criticism of the case officer, but it uh, seems to me that the applicants have not um, put a very good case for themselves, uh, and I believe there are new people into the market, if I understand correctly. Uh, and it's that 7.3.3 that uh, really raises the red flag to me, bringing vulnerable children into an area, uh, sorry, where they don't clearly indicate where they're going to get uh, an education from, I think is uh, uh, really quite uh, quite significant. And I think looking at 7.4.2, where um, it is saying quite clearly there, and I don't know whether this is the applicant saying this or the, uh, the case officer, but the need to travel with all private vehicles being used for the majority of journeys due to the limited bus services. Um, that is going to have a serious impact on uh, on the on the locality there, and is contrary to uh, uh, I forget which planning con uh, planning local plan po policy it is, and I've got my bit of paper somewhere but can't put my hand on it. So I'm not happy with this, and uh, I certainly will. Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to say which way I'm going to vote because that uh, might be accused of undue influence. So. Um, uh, if there are no further speakers, can we move to a vote, please? Um, has been proposed and seconded twice. Uh, Anita, could you move to the vote for me, please? Yes, certainly, Mr Chairman. Um, so we're voting for... Uh... Chair Chairman, apologies, it's Martha. Yes, Martha. Can we just clarify the policy reasons that have been put forward for refusal? I didn't catch them. I'm sorry, Chairman. Uh, I'm not so sure we have to give them. What we are saying is we are minded to refuse uh, and we'll come back in five days' time with the reasons to be considered by the interim head of planning. Are you saying that's not adequate? Um, it has been in the past. Uh, yeah, normally, obviously, I think we've had some policy reasons that has been yeah, voted on as a minded to and then followed up, but if there aren't any in, the in, in this instance, then... Um, I'll defer to Mr Upton to just confirm that he's happy for members to vote that way. I can give some reasons. Yeah, if you... it's clarif yeah, it's clarifying the issues of concern. Um, okay. Penny, Penny, do you want to refer to this particular, particular planning, uh, uh, local plan policies? Well, I'll make a start, shall I? Um, SP1, um, sustainable travel. Uh, SP2, uh, the impact on our smaller villages, the housing needs of local people, uh, not compromising the village's nature and character, the um, lack of services and infrastructure. Um, SD1, which is minimising travel and the ability to access services. Um, I'm not quite sure where the uh, extra we need to put local need, maybe that comes under SP2, and DE1. So those were the ones I was going to um, work on. I think we've got reasons within all those, and um, I'm quite happy to put the more detail in. I'm going to be working on the local plan, the NPPF, and the Colstoworth Neighbourhood Plan. Also, the Section 9 of NPPF, the development should be you know, on highways ground because of the impact of the safety. Yeah, that was incorporated in... Uh... Did um, SD1, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think so. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I suggest also on DE1 that we include uh, crime and the fear of crime, please? Yep. Okay. Well, I, th I think that uh, answers the question that uh, Martha raised. What are, what are we looking at, Martha? So we're looking at SP1, SP2, DE1, SD, uh, SD1. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, so uh, Anita, can we move to the vote, please? Yes, certainly, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Councillor Bellamy. Four. This is four minded to refuse, isn't it? Just yes. so that we're getting that correct, yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Bishnow Singh. Four minded to refuse. Thank you. Councillor Crawford. Abstain. Councillor Dilks. Four minded to refuse. Thank you. Councillor Exton. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Cavery Brown. Four minded to abstain. Thank you. 
No, sorry. <laughs> Minded to refuse. Minded to refuse. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, Councillor Mills. SP ones and God knows what's going on in my mind. Councillor Mills. Four minded to refuse. Thank you, Councillor Reed. Four minded to refuse. Thank you, Councillor Selby. Against. Thank you. Councillor Jackie Smith. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Judy Smith. Abstain. Thank you. And Councillor Bob Adams. Councillor Adams. Myself, uh, minded to refuse, four minded to refuse. Thank you. So that's seven for minded to refuse, one against minded to refuse, and four abstentions. Thank you, Anita. Uh, can we move on? Oh, no, we, uh, we're uh, comfort break, five minutes, please. Thank you.
hope that's given people sufficient time to have a comfort break. Uh, Anita, can we do a quick roll call, please? Yes, certainly, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Um, Councillor Adams. Present. Councillor Judy Smith. Present. Thank you. Councillor Bellamy. Present. Councillor Bishnau Singh. Councillor Bishnau Singh, are you there? Come back. Councillor Crawford. Present. Thank you. Councillor Dilks. Present, Mom. <laughs> Councillor Exton. Present. Thank you. Councillor KB Brown. Present. Councillor Mills. Present. Councillor Reed. He's just sitting down. He's present. They're calling for you, Robert. Bless <laughs> him. <laughs> Some say. President, I want to do our current chairman's yoga exercises to get me bothered. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm also back. I did a few squat exercises too to get safe. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Selby. Selby. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. I thought you said 10 minute comfort break, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I said five, Ian. Councillor <laughs> um, Jackie Smith. Present. Thank you. Everybody's here that should be here, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Anita. So we go on to the last item, item 8, S21759. Phil Jordan, please. Are you with us, Phil? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Apologies. Just upload no the presentation. Rosemary, would you mind turning your mic off, please? Thank you. Yeah, it's on the screen, Phil. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, members. Um, this final item is uh, application S21759. It's the proposal for a detached dwelling in the village of Carlby. Um, Sheikha Dasani is the case officer, but I'll, I'll be presenting the uh, officer case. So, um, as always, the detail is in the main report. Um, key issues I'm going to cover are the principle of development, um, the design and impact on the character of the area, uh, impact on neighbouring properties in terms of residential amenity, and uh, considerations around drainage. So, has that street view image appeared now, Chairman? Uh, yes, it has, Phil. Yeah. So, I, I know your members carried out a site visit yesterday. Um, I just wanted to have this available just to refer to the context as opposed to um, using lots of, you know, 2D photos, um, which I think were in the original presentation pack. But um, it, for me, I found it quite difficult to sort of pick out and understand the context with those photos. So th this is the application site here. Um, you can see it is a gap in a frontage. It's it's a tight site um, between this uh, newer dwelling and then this traditional sort of farm cottage. Uh, my understanding is the land was originally uh, part of that cottage, and um, you, you know the it's now put forward for development of an independent dwelling in its own right. Um, the, the, the little substation here, that, that sits on land outside the application site, and this um, small sort of outbuilding uh, type structure here, that, that would obviously be removed through the development. Um, you can see that the cottage is very much, um, you know, traditional and modern uh, and uh, modest in, in appearance, um, and, and you've got some much more modern development now to the rear of the site. 
um, obviously adjacent on, on the other side of the site, and then a variety of property types and designs on, on the opposite side of the road. Um, so the, the location plan here um, shows that the uh, the access would be a, effectively a shared access as proposed with uh, number 24 to the north, which is the the traditional um, cottage. Uh, you, you can see the dwellings proposed to be set back a, um, effectively a, an equivalent distance from the, the highway as uh, number 24, um, and then the adjacent property to the to the south, which is uh, number 20. Um, so you can see in terms of the siting, it, it does sort of broadly follow the, the building line there around the corner of High Street. Um, the dwelling as proposed, um, it's single dwelling, um, hipped roof. Um, the there is a condition requiring further details of materials um, as submitted in the plans. The frontage would be stone and then with um, the sort of uh, stone coins and and then brick, uh, sort of a reclaimed brick to the side and rear elevations. Um, th th this sort of atrium on the front, um, that is a little bit sort of an, an, an unusual um, feature um, but that, that's obviously been been included there as part of the proposal um, these are the floor plans um, so it's a, a four bedroom um, detached property again this just shows a bit more sort of detail of the layout really and um, the shared drive and then the parking arrangements to the front and a sort of modest you know, rear, rear garden. You can just see here the, the substation where that would be um, in situ. So th th this is a, a plan that was requested from the um, the agent and I understand this has been done and informed by um, a topographical survey. Um, so it just shows a comparison between the dwelling as proposed and then the that farm cottage um, at number 24 you, you can see that the eaves height is higher um, sort of 4.8 meters as opposed to 4.4 meters but the the, the the hipped roof does allow for a, a sort of a, a, a shallower um, roof and that means that the overall sort of ridge height of the property is just a little bit less than that um, that that farmhouse. I uh, just sort of tried to dig out these plans. Um, there has been a previous approval on the site. Um, I, I guess limited weight in terms of um, being material to this application. It was approved in 1999 um, and what what you can see there though is that the same access arrangements formed part of that approval um, and you can see that outline application at the time uh, the property was shown to be 10 meters wide the, the current proposal is nine meters wide um, uh, and you know it, i guess it just shows it's, it's sort of a, a broadly the similar footprint to, to what's now being looked at um, just of interest as well, this was the location plan submitted with that application, and it's quite interesting because it just highlights that you know the the, the change in context in any case from that time, um, you know, to, to what we're sort of currently looking at, and you can see that you know not only was that property, which I think is number twenty, that was the largest attached property that that currently you know wasn't. Um, built at the time and then at, at some point in time I'm not sure of the exact date but all of that land actually to the rear of um, number 24 was was one at one time you know in, in the not too distant past um, sort of relatively open as well so you can see you know that the, the, there is a change in generally in the context of um, of the village and the surroundings.
Uh, I, I've sort of been through, just uh, looked at the report. Um, we did have quite a late representation come in um, from the neighbouring property, and it it um, it looks like there's some retained rights uh, from the the owners of this plot and the the drainage arrangements for number 24 to use the um the drainage system there um i i just thought it was worth sort of capturing drainage details by condition um so this would allow us to sort of look at the appropriateness of any drainage arrangements with the appropriate drainage body so that this this effectively recommends um details of surface and foul water drainage should the application be approved um again just going through the, the report um th there's a condition there that captures uh sort of further details of hard and soft landscaping within the plot and i think that just needs a sort of an implementation condition which this 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 part of it would effectively require all of those details around hardened landscaping including boundary treatments um, and, and this also includes, I think, specified within that condition is levels um, in the main report. Again, looking at the um, back at the sort of the context, I think some of the relationship issues are a sort of a result of a, a, a sort of a slight change in levels there. And you can... Um, depending on what level you set the damp proof course, you you can sort of mitigate to some extent houses appearing particularly sort of prominent. And so I, I think in this case it is justified to ask for, um, or, you know, finished levels. You, you can just see here in this sort of image as well, that newer development to the rear, as well as obviously to the side of the property. Um, and then again, sort of just having looked through and reviewed um, the case officer's report again, I, I think condition eight, it must have, so it's just a minor amendment, you know, before the dwelling hereby per permitted is occupied. I think the current wording is before each dwelling. So it's just a sort of a, a, a typo really in that, that proposed condition. Um, so just a, a really quick summary of um, the, the report and the recommendation. Um, the principle of development is supported by the local plan policy SP3. It's a gap in a frontage, um, and you've got a, a sort of a an adopted neighbourhood plan in this place in Carlby, and there is a policy there that supports um, infill development. In in terms of the siting, um, it's considered to be appropriate and set back a, a consistent distance with the neighbouring properties. Uh, the scale is considered to be a, appropriate in terms of both the relationship with the, the properties on either side um, and you know so as not to sort of impact on any um, neighboring amenity the the design is a you know it's it's always a bit of a judgment there um, that, that that's really in this case the appearance of the property and you know how that would sit in in the street scene um, obviously the there's a condition there that captures what the final materials of the property would would be, um, which you know can make quite a big difference um, in terms of trying to assimilate something with its context. Likewise, the boundary treatments, um, soft landscaping, they can be important details for these um, these tighter infill plots. But the you know in terms of sort of looking for a, a style. Um, as I say, you know, you look around that there isn't a sort of a huge amount of consistency there. Um, the area isn't a conservation area. So um, I think, you know, the, the officer's recommendation is, is that the, the the style of the building as proposed is, is acceptable for this context, subject to those further details uh, reserved by condition. So... Um, yeah, I've talked about the additional condition for drainage, that the levels is picked up in that um, landscaping condition. And so the, the officer recommendation is that the scheme should be approved um, subject to the conditions in the main report and those additional and amended conditions that I've covered. 
Thank you, Chairman, and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Phil. Do you mind leaving those uh, that presentation slides up for a short while? Because there's one I want to refer to later on. Of course, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, only one speaker here, and that is the Chairman of Carby Parish Council, Mr. Bavister. John, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, and apologies for keeping you waiting, John, and thank you for your patience. Yeah, I've waited 40 years for planning to improve in this area. Five <laughs> hours more won't make any difference. Thank you. Uh, I'll start now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With the original OPP on this tiny site, past officers sensibly imposed a condition to limit the scale and design of any future development to protect the heritage of this Lincolnshire farm cottage. <clears throat> with a recommendation for approval for a height for development above a line between the two adjacent roofscapes. The hip roof ridge height, I don't believe personally, are depicted as correct in your uh, presentation. Officers misleading refer to the MPPF directive as policies in their own right. However, it is an overarching framework of guidance for developing a plan that should clarify localised policy. Officers excel in using the local plan's ambiguous and unclarified village policies for word games and stifle any sensible consideration of a community. Committees should protect our village from imposing officers' self-centred views of an interpretation of the local plan, which is not fit for purpose. <clears throat> the local plan has no clarification of the numbers for local community social housing needs, no clarification of type of dwellings required, no clarification of backland development, no clarification of garden development, no clarification of brownfield site development, and no control of highways cops out. It is not good enough nor appropriate for councillors trying to correct missing issues at the planning meetings. It's too late. We've all been let down by the plan and the officers in the beginning. Debating missing detail, then voting for approval has no gain. Committee who propose grounds for refusal are bullied with the rhetoric, this is not stand up against the appeal costs. Ignoring our heritage by stating you can only consider what is in front of you on its own merit, thereby ignoring the meaning of planning. Greater consideration detail should be given to village development at a micro level. Past and present officers who see themselves as custodians of the area should be ashamed spending years on large acreage district applications and we end up with the same old build a house anywhere development. Just add a few trees and all will be fine. The latest occurrence is to incorrectly state the neighbourhood plan has been outdated by the local plan. Carby's plan is not in conflict. It is what the MPPF desires, giving perspective to produce detail That's and clarity to areas of the local plan relative to the parish. Being unfamiliar has resulted in poor planning decisions and recommendations from a disconnected churning phase of officers. In disregarding a realistic neighbourhood plan, you will haul all of it succeeded in destroying our community. There you are, three minutes of truth, yet it will probably take three hours to expose the real mess in this area. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, John. I've spoken with your usual passion for uh, Carlby uh, and everything, uh, and quite rightly so too. Okay, there are. There's no other speakers, um, so we can move straight on to questions to the case officer. Are there any, Shelley? Any questions for the case officer, please? Yes, Chairman. Councillor Helen Crawford. Thank you, Councillor Crawford. Helen, please. Hello, thank you, Chairman. Thank you for the presentation, Phil. Um, when I did the site visit, I noticed that there's a small um, stone wall. Will that be kept into the development as a part of the character of the village and the heritage of the area? Yeah, I mean, that, that's um, certainly something that can be um, picked up in those landscaping details um you know very desirable to keep those traditional front boundary treatments um generally uh, developers would, would would look to do that you know w w where you've got something that's already um suitable and, and characterful then um you know the, 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 it's it's almost like a a, a gift from the site um to to the future developer so th that that's certainly something that we could pick up and um, capture within those hard landscaping details 
I think that would be good if you could, because it runs down the side and a little bit at the front. Um, but I think that would be help um, with the character of the, the village to keep that. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Uh, next speaker, please, Shelley. Councillor Penny Milnes. Councillor Milnes, Penny, please. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Phil. Um, slight technical point. Um, on page 75, ongoing conditions talks about barn conversions. Conditions 9 and 10. Is it me or should they not be in there? Sorry, uh, Chairman, I'm just going to, I can load this up pretty quickly again. I'm just going to um, stop sharing and then um, open up the... Apologies, Councillor Mills. It wasn't my report, so I'm not uh, sort of intimate um, with the every condition, but just let me um, have a look. So, so w which part of the report are you referring um, to? Well, it's page 75 on mine. Um, ongoing conditions 9 and 10. Yep. Refer to barn conversions, as far as I can make out. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, yeah, again, that's a, that, that's a um, yeah. So, what we do is that those, those conditions are um, there to protect um, sort of further changes to the pro property that would be, you know, ordinarily permitted development. So, it looks like they've been picked up from obviously something that was a, you know, a barn conversion. So where it, the, the, the wording would be the same, but it would be um, alteration to the roof of the, um, you know, dwelling hereby approved on, on both of those conditions other than the barns to be converted. So, yeah, that, that, that is a, an error in the wording of those conditions. Thank you, Phil. Um, my other question, and it follows on from Helen Crawford and the stone wall down the side, um, can we add a condition if we were to approve it? I'm not prejudging here, but I'm just asking you a question um, about putting um, a, a, an old stone wall along the frontage um, to reflect the character of Carby and link in with that one down the side. Um, sort of a boundaries treatment condition or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think you've got that in the, um, you know, condition five, um, which requires details of hard and, loft, of, and soft landscaping. Um, it, it does have a means of enclosure in there, which, um, you know, that, that would allow that detail to be picked up in that condition. Um, It, it's, it's just whether we could be a bit more specific about stone walling. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to, to stop, um, you know, be, being more explicit in that condition. Um, you know, so where it says, you know, at the moment we're just asking for details, which would obviously be, should the application be approved, it would be subject to, um, you know, consideration. But it, you can make the, the condition read more explicitly if, if there's something in, in particular that members um, thought was desirable there. So if there was a, you know, a strong feeling about a continuation of that um, traditional wall along the, the, the front of the, the property there, then s some words around that bullet point on means of enclosure could, could be could be included there. Uh, thank you, Phil. And, and my other point is, um, this is quite a tight site as you yourself have put it um, next to a traditional and modest old Lincolnshire farm cottage. Has this design and the um, siting within the tight site been to our designers um, under the design SPD to get some information? Because obviously under SP3, 
infill, um, the design codes were very important. Yeah, um, no, it hasn't. Um, the we sort of limit that surface service really um, for for the major developments, and you know, just by doing that, it, it's fairly it's fairly overrun. Um, you know, in sort of quite you know exceptional circumstances, we can seek the views of the um, urban design officer, um, but that that hasn't been done in this instance. Yeah, it, it's just that in SP3, the specific relate infill, it specifically relates to the design SPD. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Penny. Uh, Shelley, any further questions to Phil? Yes, Councillor Harish Biznalsing. Harris, Council of Business, Harris, please. Thank you. Just a straightforward quest questions. Um, the, Phil, does this uh, uh, development meet with a 45 degrees uh, rule, you know, in terms of the neighbours' amenities? Um, it, it would do, yeah. Um, you know, it's not cited um, significantly, you know, further forward or, or back of any of the um, primary window, so it, it would meet that uh, 45 degree rule. Thank you. Any any further questions, please, Penny? Uh, Shelley? No further questions, Chairman, no. Uh, now I've got one for clarification, Phil. Um, and you, you talked about finished levels and you showed us a drawing where the roof levels were virtually the same height, uh, which I've got on my uh, Papers as uh, proposed elevations, page 79, is, have I got the right area? Yep. Um, am I right in saying that the cottage is at a lower ground level than the, uh, than the level for the, the, for the proposed uh, development? It, it does look like that. And, um, I, I, you know, I think that's what sort of um, skewed it, um, hasn't it? it yeah, I think I think certainly the relationship with um, you know number twenty of it is that which is the newer property adjacent to the uh, the, the substation. It it looks sort of you know far greater in you know scale when when you know look, looked adjacently into it, and it does look to me like the the land is on a slightly higher level. And um, as I said, sometimes with sort of modern properties compared to these more traditional properties the you know you, you'll notice on that traditional farmhouse that the um, the door threshold is very much sort of you know le level with the with the land level as you walk in and mm -hmm. on these newer properties you quite often get that um, sort of 150 mil you know step in into the property um, you don't have to build them like that um, you know you can set them w within the ground and there's obviously you know, regrading works that could be done to the land levels. So I, I think, again, for me, in terms of condition five, which, um, you know, picks up on some some level of um, some some uh, level of detail on levels. Um, you know, there would there would be the ability there to, um, you know look at the levels of adjacent properties and, and ensure that any finished levels were were sort of you know set the same in this case yeah okay I'm, I'm going to be a bit pedantic with this one phil because we're told as a committee we have to consider what is before us not what could be or may be uh, and that concerns me with this particular one uh, in relation to uh, the uh, overbearing to a neighborhood property and uh, 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 landscape of the the existing um, of the ex of the existing surroundings um, i'm going to make a suggestion here and uh, Councillor Reid might jump up in horror um, because I, th I take a view that um, some of these where they're very sensitive areas would do very well to be looked at by our own design pad and I'm talking about Richard Shaw here and even possibly David Singleton in terms of how they view the uh, proposals being put forward uh, uh, either clash or don't clash whichever the case may be um, with, the, with the local uh, character and neighbourhood um, so I'm really uh, going 
uh, minded to say uh, to committee to defer this to give it the opportunity to give uh, the design pad, uh, particularly Richard Shaw, the opportunity to go and have a look at this because I'm minded that um, there was a previous application. Uh, which actually had the support of the parish council, uh, and you did refer to it, uh, uh, Phil, uh, the previous one, um, uh, which was supported by because the the height levels were totally different to the the ones that uh, we're being asked to approve now. Um, but I'll leave that just there for now. Councillor Reid is uh, I don't know whether he's waving furiously at me or uh, just asking to speak. But uh, can I just defer to Councillor Reid for a minute and then I'll come back. OK, uh, thank you for that, Chairman. I'm not jumping up and down in horror. Uh, what I am doing um, is uh, going to support the officer in what he has said where design is concerned. He has said that there is a limit, or a, a limit really, for major developments except for an exceptional infill. And I think that this clearly demonstrates an exceptional infill. I think there is, um, it's exceptional because of uh, the neighbourhood plan and it, where it is, where the cottage is concerned, where the development is concerned, and where it, there is even ongoing conditions which. Um, Ooh, have um, a dual interpretation to uh, put it best on page 75 with items 9 and 10 which could be um, make reference to a barn so I think you wouldn't be wrong um, in deferring um, this for um, a, des a design input on this occasion thank you Okay, uh, Jeff, you wish to come in? Yes. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, sorry, I've just kept the video off just in case of connection issues. Um, yes, I think uh, having listened to the contributions, um, obviously it's for members through yourself, Chairman, to uh, decide where to go with it. But um, yeah, a, a further input on the design side would appear appropriate given the issues that have been raised. Uh, across various contributions during the discussion just okay thank you for that Jeff uh, so on that basis uh, do, does any member I don't wish to stifle any discussion or contribution because, but it will come back to us um, but uh, with your permission uh, I am moving the deferral on the, on the grounds that we have said I think Councillor Reid would be seconding that um, uh, I've got uh, what's so uh, councillor Helen Crawford is also second to the deferral uh, we'll be happy to do that does anybody wish, member wish to um, make a contribution uh, to a debate before we uh, take that vote please <laughs> yes Come please on. Bob uh, it's Penny I did put speak please in the chat box got overtaken can I just make um, the odd comment yes please um, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. Um, I think it is important that this goes to the design pad, but I am a little concerned that um, I don't want us to be sidelined from the potential thought that this is over development of a very tight site that's been built around in the years intervening um, and dwarfing that little cottage. So if it goes back to the design team, um, I mean, I personally would like that idea of, of it being an overdevelopment taken into account um, as the context, you know, uh, of it all. I'm not against modern design at all, and that's not what I'm talking about, but I do think it is potentially too tight on that site, too limited car parking, there's no garaging, and um, I don't know whether we just titivate the design or whether we take that all into account at the same time. Uh, Jeff, would I be right in saying that we could those comments that Penny has made can be taken in addition to the ones that uh, have been made by myself and Robert? You beat me to the bounce on that one, Chairman, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. 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 Thank okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other comments on that, on the 
votes before we go to a vote? No, in that case, uh, it has been moved and seconded that we defer it for that further, uh, what's the word, I shall, uh, for further uh, consideration. Um, do we need a recorded vote on this one, Martha? Yes, please, Chairman. Thank you. So, uh, Anita, if you'd go to the recorded vote, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Councillor David Bellamy. Four. Councillor Bishnau Singh. Four deferral. Thank you. Councillor Crawford. Four deferral. Councillor Dilks. Four, Mom. Okay. Councillor Exton. Four. Councillor KB Brown. <laughs> Councillor KB Brown. I'm trying to unload. Oh, Four. Four. Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, Yes, I can, Councillor KB Brown. Thank you. Councillor Milnes. Four. Councillor Reid. Four. Thank you, Councillor Selby. Four. Councillor Jackie Smith. Four. Thank you. Councillor Judy Smith. Four. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Four. Thank you. That's Bob in favour for deferral, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. I think the agenda says uh, any urgent items uh, that the chairman might wish to bring forward. I don't have any. Um, we, we would normally uh, have a wash up, but I've got a meeting to go to at four o'clock, uh, as have uh, some of my colleagues. Um, we do need to make time, members, to look at the, uh, the um, additional information. It's something we used to do on a regular basis, and we've not got back in the habit of doing. Um, but I think uh, we need to make time for that at, uh, at the next meeting. I don't know. Jeff, can you give me any idea how many items there are on the agenda for the next meeting and the weight of them? Well, oh, Robert? Uh, yeah, I can do, uh, Chairman. I'd be uh, quite. <laughs> I've just opened the packet. Um, I knew it was going to be a heavy one coming, members. Uh, we've obviously got the coming back the two items that were minded to refuse uh, of which they're both being put forward back for approval uh, obviously Long Bennington Travellers and indeed the uh, three dwellings on Stamford Street in Grantham and then we'll get into uh, the meat of uh, the applications of which we've got um, the St Martin's application which we had a presentation on last week. Uh, we have then got um, uh, 96 dwellings um, which is uh, Wilford Lane, Ancaster. Uh, we have got uh, the um, Zone 7 application from uh, Elsie Park, Bellway Homes and um, the controversial bridge. Uh, we have then got, um, uh, just to completely um, exercise as we have got the poultry farm at full back, come back for approval. So it's pretty heavy going, I'm afraid. Yeah. The, Very the, heavy going, so perhaps we might need to look at this, uh, Jeff, this information report at one of the planning sessions. Sorry, one of the training sessions. Right. Okay. If we can. Yeah. Or when we I'll can. Have a look at that. Say. Yeah. Uh, okay. I really think that might be an idea because just at this moment, um, thank you, members. Thank you, officers. Boy, oh boy, is this a heavy month. Um, yep. you know bless us all uh, we knew in a way it was going to be where it is but uh, we need to help each other and rely on each other to um, to deliver this month because um, it is it is a big one okay yeah noted all right okay with that uh, comment any uh, Jeff anything to say before we close the meeting or any no. of the officers anything to say Phil Do I take that as no, a I'm not sure if Phil's there. <laughs> He's I still am. there. He is. Am, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm... Okay. Yeah. No, no, okay. Nothing, nothing from me now. And um, I, I can certainly, you know, pick up with the agent on that last application, some of the things that were discussed and, and yeah. um, as well as with the, own, you know, with the design team. Thank you for that, Phil. Phil I really was... think that would be sympathetic in that particular situation. Yeah. I, was, I was just going to say, Bob, um, 
Just to say thank you for um, Phil Jordan particularly. I hope you enjoyed your lunch, Phil. Take the rest <laughs> of the <your> off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had a Jaffa, I had a Jaffa cake, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one, I wish he gave him too much time, Phil. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anybody, any final comment to make before I close the meeting? Yeah, uh, we've only got sure. five minutes left. Yeah, yeah we've, we've got to go. Please. Yeah. please. Um, I'll just let Phil please. have a quick chat with him after the meeting, please, Phil. Okay. It will be very quick. I'll send you an email with the number. Phil, Phil Jordan, that is. Yeah, he's, yeah, he needs, yeah. Is he, is, the, is he at the uh, full of meeting? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll come th back to you. Thank you. Yeah. thank you, members, for thank your forbearance and contributions, etc. And uh, close the meeting. Look forward to seeing you on the seventeenth, if not before. Thank you.